Okay. Is everybody seeing what I'm demonstrating on the on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so our topic four is on ethics bias and competitors. That is number one. Okay, ethics bias competitors. So we want to look at um, you know, first one. We'll look at suppliers and buyers. Remember, this is not consumers and suppliers. This is not intro to business ethics. This is not employees. So know what you're doing. We're talking about suppliers and buyers. And then we'll come to competitor to competitors. So the first one is, uh, so first, uh, suppliers, stakeholders of bias. Now I will explain Wisconsin, where you are, they buy a lot of E4 stationery. Okay, they do that. They do that. Now, um, so the question is, whoever supplies stationery, uh, E4 stationery to Wisconsin, are they stakeholders of Wisconsin? Business ethics is saying yes. Why is it so? Because if Wisconsin all of a sudden stop buying those stationaries, it can affect the business of that, that firm. It can affect the business of that firm. All right? So Wisconsin buys a lot of things from different businesses. Water, they buy. They buy a lot of things. So all those who supply water, stationery, if for furniture, computers, to Wisconsin, they are suppliers of Wisconsin. And they have interest in, in Wisconsin because whenever Wisconsin buy their things, it makes their businesses to grow. So whenever Wisconsin does something bad, man, it does affect them. That is why the suppliers, they are stakeholders. Now, as the suppliers are stakeholders, vice versa, Wisconsin is also a stakeholder in the buyer because if the buyer does not bring what they're selling, Wisconsin cannot also go on, they cannot do business, okay? That's the first thing. So that's what I've explained, right? Now, in this lecture, if I talk about the buyer and the seller and the ethical issues, we are looking at that from two angles. One, organizational levels issue. Two, individual level issues, okay? Now, I'm gonna take them one by one and I'd like you to pay attention. One, you say, Mr. Lecturer, how will organizational level ethical issue be like under organizational level ethical issues? The first one is known as misuse of power. What does that mean? And I'm explaining so that next week when I come, you get to explain. What does that mean? It means that whether between a buyer and a seller, eh, whoever is stronger or bigger than the other can bully the weaker one. And that chance of bullying is what we call ethical problem. So if I'm a bigger firm, and I sell to you, right? Um, especially if 
maybe I'm a sole source. I'm the only one that sells to you. I can force the price high because you don't have any other alternative. Whether you can, you can afford, you cannot afford, you know, like in Ghana, whenever people increase price, no regard for the poor. It's a very complicated country. Most of the developing countries. Okay, no regard for anybody. So price of yam, same for everywhere. Water, same everywhere. Okay, so if one person is a sole sourcer or sole supplier, they can force the price on the one that buys from them. In the same way, look, the one that buys can also say, because I buy a lot of things from you, if you joke, I will stop. Once I stop, your, your business will collapse. Now, this interplay of power, what we call misuse of power. So please, business ethics is trying to say relationship between a buyer and a seller. Whoever is stronger present opportunity for bullying. And that bullying can be ethically problematic because one can take advantage of the other. That's all. That's all. Okay. Now, it's just like rich countries and poor countries. Rich countries can molest, manipulate the poor countries. When they give you money, they will say, do, you see to do this. You see to do this. If you say no, they won't give you. Can you imagine? Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to, uh, so, so that's what I've explained. The explanations are here. The second one is loyalty in business. So I, I, I hope you're writing all this because the explanations I'm offering is making it better. Yeah. Loyalty in what? Loyalty in business. What does this mean? Now, this one asks the question that whenever I, a, a buyer and a seller, they do business with one another. And after contractual obligations have been discharged, after contractual obligation has been executed, and one decide not to continue, must one still give an informed consent that please, I'm not going to buy from you again. Must they do that? Natural answer is that if it is contract and you break it, you're liable. Once contract is executed, discharge, man, I'm not obliged. That is what the natural law says. But in one, we said it is go beyond the law. And therefore, um, situations where somebody says so, oh, we've executed a contract, and therefore I'm not under any obligation to alert you that I'm not going to buy from you. Business ethics is trying to say such a behavior is not loyal enough and therefore constitute on ethical practice. So the conclusion is that when I'm dealing with you, whether it is contractual or not contractual, because there have been relationship between you and I, anytime I want to decline, I want to stop, I need to get you informed. I get to be loyal to you. If I do not do that one, I can be charged as ethical breach. Okay. All right. Now, somebody called me and the person was asking, is the lecture coming off? Yes, why not? 
if the lecture was not going to come off, I got to inform you in advance. I got to inform you in advance. If I don't inform you, nobody will take me to court, but it's ethically problematic. It's, I have caused ethical breach. Okay, so that is about loyalty. So I need to be loyal to you. You are executive master students. I need to be loyal beyond the law. And so also every fair, number two. So I will ask you next week, when we are done with contractual obligations, must we be loyal to one another? Yes, ethically. And the reason why that is important is that because you're dealing with me, if you don't come and tell me that you're switching, I might be preparing my business with the hope that you are coming to buy. And that will cost me, man, big time. Okay, let's move on to Ethica. Remember, all these things are organizational level. Organizational level. Third one is preferential treatment. So they say the question of where does obligation of loyalty ends. Now listen to this. The meaning of this one is that when a buyer or seller become loyal to you, somebody will ask the question. Whenever any other firms comes and they say, oh, please, we supply the same thing this firm supplies to you. Can we bring our quotation for, for you to look at it? So that if you are happy, you also buy from us. Now, there's an argument over there that, oh, because one firm is already loyal to you, if you open up to another firm, you are causing a breach. So we are then asking business ethics. When a firm is loyal to me, and another firm is coming, what should I do? And here is the answer. The answer is that if I don't give opportunity to the new firms also to bring their quotations, I am causing unfair competition and that is ethically unacceptable. Number two, the fact that you're loyal to me does not mean that I should give you preferential treatment. Number three, what I need to do whenever other people come up to, deal, to do business with me is to inform you and say, times are changing. There are new products and supplies in the market more competitive than what you do. And if we go by them, it's going to help our business. So we are informing you and giving you the opportunity to also come up so that we continue to buy from you. But after informing you, if you're not in the position to improve yourself, that one, we cannot continue to buy from. So the fact that we are lawyer doesn't mean we should give you preferential treatment alone. If we do that, we are creating unfair competition. All right? So we should open up to others and then, but get you informed that times are changing. If you can do A, B, C, D, we're going to stay with you. Otherwise, forget it. Okay, forget it. Number four, relationship between buyer and seller. First one, power. Stronger person can manipulate. Second one, after we have discharged contract, if I want to change my mind, I need to inform you. Third one, when you are loyal to me, I mustn't deal with you alone. I should deal with others, but I should give you the chance to improve. Fourth one is this, and he says, anytime we are making negotiations, look at number one, two, three, four. He says that any 
lies that comes out. Now, so look at we've explained lies, pay-free, deception, all right, including strengthen one position overly. All of them, when they are found out, a constitute unethical behavior. Or look, non-disclosure, deliberately withholding a key information, all right? Or using information to exploit, all right, deceiving. So look, in uh, relationship between a buyer and seller, Wisconsin and where they buy their things from, if any of this is found, we consider it as unethical. And say, why is it so? These are the reading, the reasons. If we do not know that in advance and companies go on and do this and later on, their lies are found, look, it will damage the relationship. It will take their reputation. They will never be given opportunities again going uh, forward. All right. So what do we say? Um, buyer supplier relationship should not be seen as a contest, but opportunity to build mutually beneficial relationship. So all the four things we have discussed, they mustn't come and destroy the relationship. And remember, when we go back, we said we are looking at um, organizational level, okay, an individual level, right? But look, so we have done organization. Coming. Uh huh. This is what is important to me. Supplier, buyer, competitor. So, so far, I've never said anything about competitors, but we are coming gradually, 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 gradually. Okay. Now, let's come to competitors. So, what does this mean? Now, those who supply water to Wisconsin, they are not Wisconsin's competitors. Competitors are, are University of Ghana and Wisconsin who do the same thing. So let, now look, we are not talking about buyer seller. We are now talking about competitor and competitor. Now, in the exams, the first thing I will ask you is that are competitive stakeholders? And the answer is yes. Why are we saying that? Because look, the more they are competitors, the more I become strong. Because if I'm not becoming strong, they will get me out of the market. So competitors, number one, help me to be strong. Competitors keep me on my toes. Number three, competitors can mispresent me. And when they do, nobody will buy from me. So we all have stick in other competitors. Okay? So look, these are competitors' right. I can ask you this in the exam. People have right to enter the market and leave. Competitors have right to set their own prices. Competitors have right to inform customers of their product, which means that we can come to the market and say, man, I sell good A, I sell good B. I want to announce and educate people about. Yeah. Okay, and again, competitors have right to privacy. So we want other competitors to know this. 
So that if anybody is advertising and all that they are trying to say is that they are painting another competitor black, such a behavior is unethical. Now look, having told you that competitors have stick number two, they have right number three, certain things can constitute unethical behavior. Now, what and what are they? Number one, overly aggressive competition and then insufficient competition. I'm going to explain, so pay attention. Mr. Lecturer, what are overly right, um, uh, aggressive competition? Now look, is this all organization collect and make use of some kind of information about their competitors, including policies, product, processes, intelligent gathering, and so on. And it is normal, number one. It's normal. Yeah, but look, listen to this ethical question arise when and one to happen. Yes, we can get that information about other universities. But the first one see if the tactics used to secure information about competitors are questionable, right? It become problem. I will explain. Two, even if not the method is questionable, but the nature of the information is also confidential, it is also not ethical. So if you come to my university, and we say this is confidential information and you still intrude, it's unethical. The one that is freely available, you can ask our student, how, what is the school fees of the University of Ghana? It's not, complete, it's not a problem, right? But if you, let's say, disguise yourself or you go to our refuse dispose dump and fish for papers, a very disguised way that the methodology is. So if you look at the it's a questionable tactics that competitors may use, which are considered as unethical as, uh, as follows. Number one, illegally breaking and entering competitors' office to steal information, right? Installing taping devices, yep to rather more gray areas without notice, these issues are all, man, master degree is very important. So we are educating you to become good managers. Two, questionable tactics may also include searching through competitors rubbish. Yeah, hiring private detective, infiltrating competitors organization with industrial spies. Yeah, covert surveillance that nobody sees through spy cameras, contacting competitors in a fake disguise such as potential customer supplier interview, all those things. Look, uh, employee for Bogos job, look, uh, such as potential customer or supplier, interviewing competitors, employees, look, for jobs that do not exist. Yeah, pressurizing customer supplier of competitors, to reveal, reveal sensitive information about their operations. Man, these are happening. And I'd like you to draw, I'd like to draw your attention to all these. Others include negative advertising. Look, deliberately criticizing competitor publicly. Stealing customers where rival customers are specifically approached in order to encourage them to switch. Can you imagine? Predatory pricing, man, you're reducing your price. Everybody is crapping for you that your, your goods are cheaper. No knowing that in the next three months, you will change the price, all right? You need to be prosecuted. You are a criminal. People are doing, all right? Uh, she said uh, a critical issue is when the organization can resort to acting whatever way it's necessary to beat their competitors, including lying, deception, providing false information about competitors to customers, poaching staff, and other such questionable practices are all considered not acceptable. OK. 
Okay, so it, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And these are areas, please. Uh, if you finish master degree, your companies are doing this. Please caution them. And then they say, in a situation where there are no competition, is also unethical. Why? Because the few firms or the only firm gets an advantage over the competitors. Okay, that's all it means. Now, the last but not the least is all that I've discussed is is at the organizational level. The first four is buyer, seller. And the last one is about competitor, competitor. Okay, the last one is individual level. What does that mean? It's simply about when we are working for firms, can we receive thank you? Can we? In a form of a gift. If I'm an accountant, and people have come to supply things to my firm and I'm paying them and they give me envelope. Is it right? That's all about that one. Okay, so this one is not at the organizational level, but the workers in the firm are doing, but it has ethical implications. Okay, so somebody is saying thank you. They're giving you hampers, they're giving you handkerchief, they're giving you money. What do you think about them? That's all about that. Now, uh, so look, there's a lot of argument about gifts and hampers. Thank you. Some people say that if you don't ask for and somebody gives you, no problem. Yeah. Some people also say that sometimes it depends on the quantity. If it is something immaterial, no worries. Or maybe let's go for lunch. Or I pass through region hotel and I bought you a lunch. So which is which, right? Must we say it is small, therefore no problem. Must we say um, uh, I never asked for, therefore no problem, right? Okay, so you need to think about that. But you know, uh, there are certain people who have a particular condition when it comes to these things. Number one, they say, if if you work uh, uh, with the World Bank, they say for them, they don't receive thank you from anybody. That is their condition. Whether it is unsolicited, whether um, a small, no way. Yeah. There are certain firms, they say, depending on the, uh, the thank you, come and disclose it for everybody to hear yeah come and disclose it okay right then some people say okay the company must come out with a policy on it that you can accept this you cannot accept this right so on and then we should do code of conduct on that one okay so the application is left to firms to decide. But the best conclusion is that what the World Bank is saying. World Bank is trying to say that whether we put it in the policy, whether we disclose it, it can influence our attitude to others. And therefore, they believe in zero tolerance for, uh, what do we call it? Uh, zero tolerance for uh, hampers, gift, and thank you, because it will affect the judgment of the workers in working for the company. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is all about ethics between buyers, sellers, ethics between competitor, competitor, and then what do the workers do? which impact on the firm they work. When they receive thank you, it can affect what they do. And therefore, where bank is saying, zero tolerance for receiving of what gift. That's all. All right. Is there anybody who has a question to ask uh, class rep units 
I have sent you an email address. Reply me. I'm going to send you a matrix for everybody to fill. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so thank you so much.